Hello there, Drew Hannish of Whiskey Lore, and time for another whiskey tasting. Today, I was going to hold off on doing a tasting of this other Keeper's Heart that I received, but I decided to go ahead and do it because, as you will notice, I'm putting quite a dent in this bottle. And one of the things that really has me appreciating this whiskey is the price point, because I did not realize that this whiskey sits around the $30 range. $30 to $35 seems to be what I'm seeing online for this whiskey. I don't know if I've seen it in my local store, but um, this is their Irish and American, and this is a blending, whereas the other day we had a blending of Irish whiskey along with bourbon. This is a blending of Irish whiskey and rye. And so there are two types of Irish whiskey that are in this. There's pot still whiskey and there is grain whiskey. Now the pot still whiskey is basically distillate that is malted and unmalted barley. Usually to me it gives off a lot of like a honey and grain kind of a note with a little pepper spice coming in. And you're thinking, well, we're going to mix that with rye. Are we going to be getting a pepper spice off of that rye? I'm going to tell you why initially I was nervous about that, but then after I looked at the makeup of this whiskey, that kind of dissipated for me. And then the other type of Irish whiskey that's in there is a grain whiskey. We don't know the sources, where they're coming from, but the uh, master distiller there, Brian Nation, is a former employee of Middleton. That doesn't necessarily mean that is where it is coming from, though. But it is coming from, because Great Northern also supplies a lot of um, spirits as well. And so it may very possibly come from there. It could even come from Cooley over in Ireland, for all we know. So uh, that is actually made up of barley and corn. And so grain whiskey tends to be distilled at a higher ABV. And so when you're drinking something like uh, Jameson, Usually a good amount of that whiskey is made out of grain whiskey. So that is kind of taking a little of the pot still world, a little bit of the Irish whiskey world, and then blending it in with a rye whiskey. Now, the rye whiskey that they're using, don't know the source of that either. It's a 95-5 rye, which means 95% rye, 5% malted barley. MGP in Indiana is a good source for that but I can't say for sure whether that's where this rye comes from. Now, the reason why I feel like this is not necessarily going to be overly peppery on the palate is because they're not using a lot of pot still whiskey, and they are using the 95.5 rye. Now, I find that the spicier notes come out in rye when it's blended with corn. Now, of course, there is going to be corn in this as well that is coming from that grain spirit, but usually the corn influence has really been knocked down quite a bit because they distill it to such a high degree. So think of it almost more like alcohol going in there rather than corn whiskey. It's, um, I don't know, you could call it a filler if you wanted to, but you know, in, in a way, the way the Irish look at it is this grain whiskey is a base and then you're going to use a single malt or a pot still whiskey to add the personality to the whiskey. Now let's dive into this thing and do a tasting. Uh, before I do that though, I do want to mention that yes, I have been kind of gone for this week. I actually was going to do a video yesterday, but I have been trying to get my studio set up and the microphone has been the biggest issue because this thing is noisy and gives me hiss. And then I found out it was actually the cord that was causing the issues. Uh, the other thing I've been working on this week is something that I'm teasing uh, coming up very soon. I'm going to be putting a lot of emphasis um, on travel. And so stay tuned for that because I have some... Um, I'm expanding a bit beyond Kentucky and Ireland in terms of my travel advice and the distilleries that I'm covering in terms of those books. So stay tuned for that. You will find out more coming up in the future.
Now, on the nose on this whiskey, and this is 43% ABV, and like I say, I love the price point on this. Irish whiskey tends to be a bit more inexpensive than, say, Scotch whiskey. So, and that's not a knock on the quality of the spirit because I've had plenty of Irish whiskeys that I would put up against uh, many Scotches. So, um, but it does make it very affordable for you if you want to um, experience these whiskeys. And this whiskey has a very green apple forward note on it. Um, there's also some tropical fruit. I put that down to some pineapple coming in. There's a slight smoky note, like a char smoke, not a peat smoke that comes in on this, and a little caramel as well. Cheers. Mm. So the rye is really very muted in this. There is a little pepper spice that comes in towards the end, but mostly it's just a really nice drinking whiskey. It has uh, lemon forward notes on this, lemon, vanilla. I say it's almost like a lemon drop once it gets to the, to the finish. A little bit of char on this. And for a whiskey that is at a lower price point, it has a really nice mouthfeel to it as well. So you can say, all right, we're taking blended whiskey and, you know, it's not going to be as good as, as other whiskeys if you're just uh, blending things. That is something we've dispelled really here on the channel and something that I tell you, when you're tasting these whiskeys, and yes, they're sourcing as well, there are many things you could probably try to knock with this whiskey, but once you taste it, I think you're going to find that in your value category, and uh, in your value category, I think this is an elevated whiskey. In your medium range whiskeys, um, you know, I mean, it's probably going to fall somewhere in that category, probably on the slightly lower end of that. But um, as you can tell from my bottle, I have been enjoying this. And so it's one of those that when they say the term everyday drinker, if you are an Irish whiskey fan, this might be something that you want to add into your collection. Now, here's the thing, is that these are blends of Irish and American whiskey. This is not a true Irish whiskey. They could not call it an Irish whiskey because it actually comes from Minnesota. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. And O'Shaughnessy, the distillery, is... They have a picture on their website of their three pot stills that they have there. So my guess is that at some point they are going to move into replacing the sourced ingredients with whatever they distill there on site. So it will be interesting to see, especially since their distiller came from Middleton. So it's very possible that he will be bringing some of those techniques in, although his pot stills aren't going to be exactly the same. Um, but this might give us an opportunity to see how that translates from Ireland over here into the United States. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, again, sorry for being away for a little while, but I'm going to try to get back on track here with doing my tastings now that I actually have a studio that is finally set up and I don't have to tinker with wires anymore. If you guys heard the language coming out of my mouth. <laughs> yesterday because it's like everything I was trying to do was just creating more noise and I'm like I'm trying to get the noise out and I'm just adding more in so it's a, a little a little bit frustrating there but anyway have yourself a great uh, afternoon and until next time cheers and slide your rock